Hello, beautiful people of the internet. It's uh, Joey here with WinterParkCycles.com. Uh, today we're talking about one of the tech features on uh, Allied's newest bike, the Echo. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Echo is a bike that has some geometry chips inserted into the frames, and you can take those chips, you can flip them one way or another, making it uh, either a road racing bike or a gravel racing bike. So today we're going to cover uh, the ins and outs of switching that from the road mode that it's in right now to the gravel mode that we're going to put in a little bit later here in the video. Um, as far as a technical skill goes, I would say this is probably a five, uh, not necessarily because it's super hard, just because there's a, a number of steps and a number of tools that you need uh, to do this. So, uh, like I said, we'll walk through all that in this video. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and uh, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe down below and ring the bell for notifications so you get uh, notifications when we put more of these videos out. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so we're going to go with the tools that you need to to take this off. So what you'll need is you'll need a, a 17 millimeter either socket or you can use the uh, the Abbey tools that uh, that they provide <clears throat> with the with the bike. Uh, it has a little 17 millimeter wrench on it uh, to take part of the geometry chip out. You'll need an eight millimeter Allen wrench to take another part of the geometry chip out. You'll need a five millimeter Allen wrench to take the wheels off of the bike if you're still using the stock through axles that came with it. Uh, they're an industry nine through axle, so that's a five millimeter Allen wrench. You'll need a four millimeter Allen wrench to take the brake bolt out and move the rear brake, or it might be a T25 if you're using SRAM, uh, but uh, I've got a four millimeter on mine. And then you'll need a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench to move the front brake plate either up or down, depending on whether it's gonna be in gravel mode or not. So these are the tools you need. Again, it might differ depending on if you're using uh, like Torx bolts for SRAM brakes or something like that, but uh, that's it. Okay, as a quick side note, the, the bike is actually still technically in, in road mode. These are the the wheels that we're putting on them. These are a 700 by 32 Gravel King Slick. And in the road mode, it still clears it. I think Allied says the tire clearance in road mode is 700 by 30, but on a 303S Panaracer Gravel King 700 by 32, it does clear, but we're gonna move it over to, to gravel mode anyways. All right, so we're gonna start with removing the wheel first. Use the five millimeter, if you still have the, you still have the stock skewer from that ally. And once we remove this wheel, we're gonna work on this drive side dropout and chip first. What we're gonna need for that is we're gonna need an eight millimeter Allen wrench to fit into here. And this is actually reverse threaded, so think lefty tighty righty loosey just because we're trying to keep everybody as confused as possible take it out and you can see that what we'll do is we'll slide this as far back as we can and then also flip this chip to basically lengthen the wheelbase and help with that tire clearance and again when putting it back in lefty tighty righty loosey sometimes it can be a little bit a little bit fickle about getting lined up so just make sure it's nice and, and lined up straight before you torque it down a little bit. Move over here, snug it up nice and good. Drive side is done. Now we're gonna move on to the, the back side where we need our four millimeter and our 17 millimeter. And again, they provide you with an Abbey tools, 17 millimeter, but I left that at home. So I'm just gonna use this socket Make sure it's seated really well on here. And this is not reverse threaded. This is just lefty loosey. And then we'll come here to this four millimeter. We're gonna take this bolt completely out. Go back to the socket here. And just like on the drive side, we're gonna flip this chip and slide the dropout back. And again, just like the drive side, it can be a little, little tricky sometimes getting in. So just make sure it's in there straight. You're not cross-threading anything like that. I get it kind of finger tight. I then put the 
four millimeter back through. There's a, a second hole back there that I'll, uh, I'll attach a photo of too to take a look at and see. Get that nice and snug. And actually it never has really required any adjusting or centering of, of the break when we're done. So that's always good. And then basically just come here and snug this 17 millimeter up. If you're using a socket, like I said, just make sure it's seated on there well so it can slip off pretty easily. So we've just switched the back pretty quick. Install the, the rear wheel and we'll move on to the front. All right, so now we're on the front. We're gonna do very, very similar to what we did on the back. Front wheel off using that five millimeter Allen wrench. Stick it aside. We're gonna start on the drive side. Now they have the, the, the sides reversed. So basically the 17 millimeter uh, nut here is gonna be on the, on the drive side versus on the non-drive side. Um, on the rear. And this is something where if I've done an, an exceptionally dirty ride, I'll get in there, I'll clean the threads out, I'll clean the, the face, the, the contact points out really well uh, where it interfaced the frame, make sure there's no grit or grime in there. But um, I actually just did that before I made this video, so I wanted to, didn't need to really do that now. Tighten it up nice and snug. That's it for the drive side. We're gonna move over to the uh, non-drive side with the, with the disc brake over there. So what we need on this side is we need that eight millimeter again as well. Um, and then we'll need a two and a half millimeter wrench or Allen wrench as well too. So much like on the, the back drive side, the front non-drive side, it's, it's reverse thread. So righty loosey, lefty tighty. And spin that out and take that out. Now what we need to do is we need to get this brake plate here to drop down too. And this two and a half is kind of hidden by that SRAM plate, but we can loosen it up enough just to back it out and get it to drop where we need to. Now on my particular bike, this one, I've got my brake hose cut probably a little short, so I've got to kind of pull on this brake while I thread these threads in. So it can be a little tricky. It's easier on um, a lot of the other ones because we the brake hose is short like I did on the front. Again, get that nice and snug. And don't forget to tighten up that two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. It's now moved up so it's nice and exposed. Again, just nice and snug, not crazy tight. Reinstall your wheel and you're ready to go gravel riding. All right, so that's it. As you can see, it's pretty easy. You do need a handful of tools, a little bit of knowledge, but I can assure you that the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get. So um, if you have any more questions, you can always uh, reach out to us on uh, our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. You can always call us. Uh, comment in the section below if you have a, an Echo yourself and if you have any tips or anything like that on changing out the chips or anything that you do differently from here. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and give us a like if you like the video. Thanks again for tuning in.